Welcome and thank you for joining me for the start of the For a Few Bullets More scenario of All Things Zombie by Lock and Load Publishing or Lock and Load Games. Now we generated our zombies. We got a couple of stragglers but we got this nice stack right there of three to contend with. Now for survivors that are entering the board when zombies are generated the zombies do not move on the first turn so they won't move which gives us a chance to make some movement towards some of these buildings up here now the players the player character can do two things during their turn they can move and then they can do an action. And let me show you in the book what the various actions are that the character can do. Now along with moving, unless otherwise stated on the survival card, they can take one action per impulse. Impulse is their turn. They can fire a ranged weapon, reload a weapon, use a piece of gear as appropriate, search a building, attempt to fast move, which if I need to do I'll explain, attempt to charge, which is charging into melee against a zombie or a group of zombies, switching weapons, which would be between your weapon in hand and the weapon in your pack, or give gear or weapons to an adjacent survivor. Only allowed if neither survivor is in a zombies or enemy survivor's hex. An action can be taken at any point during the impulse, and they give an example here. Beck moves one hex, conducts range fire, then spends the remaining four movement points allotted to her counter. With the exception that would be melee combat. When you enter melee combat at any time, your movement ends. Now I don't want to rush into a building right away, because we already have these zombies out here to contend with. Now going into a building would cost me two movement points to enter and then as soon as I enter it I would draw a zombie card to see how many zombies are in there and it could be anywhere from zero to six. So it can get out of control quick if I try and do that while I have all these zombies out here. Now there's no timer, there's no amount of turns, so there's no rush for me. So I want to take this in a, in a smart way and not just rush into everything. Now I'm going to move Tanya, and as you can see by her middle number, she can move four. And I want to move her up here. What I'm going to do is move her four. Now I can't do that because I can't move onto a hex or a half hex. That's only for entering the board. So I'll have to go around this building because if I enter it, I could generate more zombies. So I'll move four. I don't have any actions I want to perform. I can't shoot at this zombie because the house is blocking my line of sight. So that's all I'm going to do for Tanya. Now I'm going to move Beck and she can move five. And again player characters can pass through the same hex but cannot end their move. Now that'll give me line of sight on this zombie. and I'm going to have Beck take a shot see if we can eliminate it before we start entering houses and I'll place one of these because she's going to fire one shot which is what she can do with the pistol that she has so this shot marker will go on the hex that she fired from now Beck who has a reputation of four is going to fire her pistol at the zombie that's two hexes away which is fine because it has a range of three and rolls one d6 for the attack. Now there's no real ammo that you have to keep track of. The only time that you would flip this counter over to the out of ammo side is if you roll two or more ones during a combat or a ranged weapon check. Now this weapon can only roll one dice so it's not going to run out of ammo unless we modify it by putting a scope on it but we'll, we'll 
worry about that if that happens. Now she's going to roll and then she's going to add this number which is a 5 to her reputation to get a total of 9. And then with that number of 9 we'll consult the range combat table to see what our result will be. Then we take our total of 9 on the range combat table then we look at the results to see if any of them apply. The first one is if the target is a survivor it's not a survivor, it's a zombie. It's a third target, well it's definitely not because there's only one zombie, it's the first target so that means that all others are a hit so that zombie has taken a wound. In all things zombie, the zombies don't have health points that you have to keep track of. If it takes a wound, that means you took care of it. So that zombie will be eliminated and it just goes right back into the into the zombie cup because you'll never run out of zombies. Now that both of our players have moved and taken their action or impulse the zombies don't move this turn, but we do have to resolve this shot, so we will roll as many d6 as shots that have been fired. In this case it's only one, so we'll roll one d6 to see if that shot will attract a zombie. We had one shot, so we roll one die to see if it generates a zombie, and it's a four, five, or a six. It's a five, so it does. Remove this shot. Shuffle the cup. Draw a zombie who is going to come in at five, which is directly to the left. And again, they come in six away, so the shot was right here on Beck. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And that'll take care of this turn, which will roll us right into the next one. Now in this turn, the zombies actually get a chance to maybe activate. So first thing we have to do is we're going to have a roll for initiative. To make it easy to remember, I'll always use the green dice for the zombies and the purple dice for the player characters. And we'll roll for initiative. They each roll one die. The zombies got a four and the players got a four. Now in the case of ties, you re-roll. Because somebody has to go first. Okay. In this case we got the players with a three and the zombies with a two. Now I'll put the dice down here just for reference for us. Now when you're rolling initiative, you're rolling against the reputation. So in this case we want to get under or equal to the reputation is a success. Now the players rolled a three. Now Tawny's reputation is a five, Bex is a four, that three is below both of theirs, so that is considered a success. Now the zombies all have a reputation of four, so that two is under their reputation, which is also a success, and they will also activate this turn. The player, or I'm sorry, the side with the highest number will get to activate first. So even though everyone is going to get a chance to activate, the players rolled the three, the higher of the two, so they will get to move first. Now the rules state that the players will take their turn in reputation order, highest to lowest. So Tanya would go first and then Beck. But thematically I don't think that you're going to have the same person taking an action each time. So I'm going to a house rule that the players themselves can decide who goes in which turn. Unless a five was rolled and then Tanya would be able to go because her reputation is five and Beck would not go. In that case of course Tanya would go first because she's the only one that would be able to go unless Beck was adjacent to Tanya. So with initiative if 
Tanya makes it, but Beck doesn't. So in the case that if she rolled a, if we rolled a five, as long as Beck is next to adjacent to a character with a star, she would also get to activate during that turn. Now she was a hex over here, and a five was rolled. Only Tanya would go. But if she's adjacent, she would go also. In this case, it doesn't matter because we got a three and they both can go. Now I'm debating whether I want to enter a building and start searching or if I want to try and eliminate some of these zombies. Because they're going to move and they're going to come pretty close to me. Now if I enter a building, there's a chance that I'm going to generate the zombies. And then I would have some right here and I would have some closing in on me at the same time. Now again, there is no no hurry here because there's no timer. There's no limit to the number of turns. So I just have to decide what I want to do. Now I've decided I'm going to go ahead and enter this building right here because it looks like they're not going to be able to reach me in just this one activation. They're going to get close, but I don't think they'll be able to reach me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Beck in because she has the ability to have one of her adversaries reroll one of their melee dice. So if we do encounter zombies, then she'll be able to handle that. Again, she has a move of five, but it only takes two to enter. So she will enter the building and we'll put this token on it so we know that the building has been entered previously. Now if you enter a building that's already been entered, you don't have to check for zombies again. And we'll draw our top card from our zombie deck and generate three zombies. Now these zombies inside the building appear inside That's one, two, and three. So all three of these zombies are inside the building with Beck. Now we have to check and see if the, she was surprised by the zombies or she surprised them. The way to check to see if the who surprises who is each side rolls one die. One for the zombies, one for the player character. And now you take the zombie die, which is a three, and you add the number of zombies in the building, which is three, so they have a six. And then you take the player character die and add that to their rep. Her rep is four, which gives her an eight, and the player wins on ties. So you're trying to get equal to or higher than, in this case, her eight beats their six, and she surprises the zombies. So we have a couple options here. We surprise the zombies. We can fire our weapon before we enter melee, if we choose, or we can back out of the building and leave without them noticing us. That's our choice. But since she's good in melee, and I have backup outside the building here, I've entered the building, and I'm going to go ahead and fire my pistol to see if I can eliminate one of these zombies before the melee starts. Now Beck is going to fire, and that weapon fires by rolling one die. She has a rep of four. We add five to get a total of nine. Now with our 9 we consult the range combat table and we can see that this target doesn't meet either one of these because it's not a survivor so that means we get a hit. So we got a hit on our zombie here. We'll add our shot token because we took so we'll eliminate a zombie and I'm going to get rid of that one that can move 5 And now we'll be able to enter melee combat. Now Beck 
has a melee combat of two. And there are two zombies in the building. You put one dice in for each zombie, and then she gets to roll her two. And we're rolling against our reputation with these. Now Beck was over because she has a rep of four, but she has one success. And the zombies with a rep of four have both failures. So we consult the table to see what happens. Again, Beck had one success and the zombies had zero. So we look, if the survivor scored more successes in the enemy and we're fighting a zombie, one zombie is killed. If more zombies remain, both zombies and survivor remain in the hex until the next activation. At that time, the survivors can choose to either exit or melee again. Zombies will always choose to melee. So Beck did a really good job here and eliminated another zombie. There's still one left, so they'll both remain in there until the next activation. Now she doesn't take any wounds because she came out the victor in the melee combat. Now I'm not going to pull the table out over and over again for every turn when it's a situation we've already seen. I'm only going to bring it out to show you whenever something occurs that's new. Tanya can now go. Beck has already moved and engaged in combat so that melee will end her, her turn. Next we have Tanya and what I'm going to do with her is I'm going to move her to around the back of this building here to make it harder for these zombies to reach her on the outside of the building and I'm going to have her shoot into the building. Now you cannot shoot through a building or rough terrain but if you're adjacent to it you can shoot into it. So I'm going to have her fire a pistol to see if we can take that zombie out. Tanya has a rep of five and rolls a five which give her a total of ten. On the range combat table anytime we roll a ten or higher it's going to be a hit. We'll mark that she fired that shot and we will eliminate the last zombie in that building which will free up Beck in the next round to go ahead and search. Now the zombies get their movement. When the zombies move they're going to avoid rough terrain and buildings and work their way around them. With the exception is if there's a player character in rough terrain or in a building then if they have the movement points left they will go into it to attack and if they enter the rough terrain once they're there they will continue to go through it to exit. Now the, again the middle number is their movement and they're going to move towards the closest player character so we got this guy way down here it's going to move three. We'll take this zombie over here that's three and work him around. Now here we have one of these can move five so we'll move him first. He can't quite get all the way there but he can get pretty close. He's going to be right outside the building and these two fours will follow behind him. And lastly we have this zombie with a movement of five. They'll go ahead and join this horde and turn it into a stack of three. The zombies didn't end their move in the same space as any of the players, so there won't be any melee right now. So that takes care of the zombie activation. And now each of our characters fired a shot off, and we have to see if that's going to draw any more zombies. Beck fired first in this turn, so we'll see if her shot attracts anything. It does not. And then Tanya also fired a shot and it also does not attract a zombie. Both of the shots are resolved 
and did not result in a zombie spawning. And that will end this turn.